Then God said to Noah and to Noah's sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it is a sign, it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember that the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I establish between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Amen. And our gospel reading from the gospel of Mark. The image is uh, of the Jordan River Valley between Israel and Jordan. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. These two stories from scripture show up in the season of Lent. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was in the wilderness after his baptism for 40 days and 40 nights. And as we move past Ash Wednesday, we begin a season of 40 days and 40 nights on our way to Holy Week toward Jerusalem. There are numbers in scripture that are meaningful and significant. If for no other reason than the way they echo one another. You see the 40 days and the 40 nights that it rained, Noah and his family were alone in the ark with a whole bunch of animals waiting to see what might happen. And Jesus, after his baptism, is driven into the wilderness by the Spirit for 40 days and 40 nights, alone, ministered to by angels, to meditate on what might happen. 
in both instances, there is a sense of wilderness, of aloneness, of water, of future, and of covenant promises. In this season of preparation for Holy Week, we consider what has brought us to this point and where it is we're going and how God is present with us in whatever boat we may feel on, however alone we might feel and envisioning what kind of future God has in store for us. For many of us, uh, during pandemic, being home being may be a sense of being alone. And for some of us, it may be too much of a sense of being together. Some of you know that for the first four months, there were seven people in my house. It was a lot of togetherness. Maybe like being on an ark, taking turns with meals and chores. Some of us, the aloneness may be more like Jesus' time in the wilderness. Jesus fasted. 40 days is a long time to fast. And in this season, in this year, pastorally, I don't feel like asking anyone to give up anything else. So much has been given up by so many. There's been a great deal of loss. But in this season of preparation, we consider what it is that's brought us this far. What sort of water has there been? Waters of baptism, waters of life, waters of the living God in the midst of our deserts, the deserts in our souls, the deserts in our spirits. What is life-giving? And how do we nurture that? Although it is very tempting, like Jesus was tempted, not to do the preparation, not to tend to the things that are hurting people around us, I don't know about you, but denial is really comforting. Denial is a defense mechanism. If I pretend it doesn't exist, then I don't have to pay attention to it. If I don't go to the doctor and have that diagnostic test, that means I'm not sick. If we just don't talk about the things that hurt, they'll go away. One of the things I love about church is that whatever it is that tempts us and whatever it is that hurts us, we have companions on the way. We have people with whom we can share so that the temptations don't overwhelm us, don't trick us into thinking that we can be in control of things that are beyond our control but also don't let us believe that we have no power to make things better. To name the ways that we're gifted and graced with the ability to be disciples that offer healing and peace to share the gifts we've received from God with those around us. Noah and his family is building an ark and gathering animals. Midrash says that uh, Noah's wife, Naama, was gathering seeds. And I know some of you are gardeners. And I know that some of you are taking deep joy in going through your gardening books right now, the seed catalogs, and figuring out what you might plant. Other folks laughed at them, though. It's a temptation to laugh at those who believe 
that something better is possible. But again, that's where community comes in. And as we struggle, as we limp along, as the fears overwhelm us sometimes, like waters or fires or freezing temperatures, there are ways that we can care for one another. The ways that we can reach out. And sometimes it's a prayer and sometimes it's a meal and sometimes it's an ear and sometimes it's a shovel and sometimes it's tilling soil or holding a hand or dropping off lint in bags or showing up in a Zoom room. You see the same God who shows up at Jesus' baptism and tears open the sky and descends like a dove and says, this, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased, is the same spirit that sends Jesus into the wilderness and then ministers to him. Whatever the day holds, God is present. No matter what rain falls, no matter how far we in, are into the 40 days, there's a dove at the end with an olive branch and a bow in the sky that reminds us again and again and again that God's covenant promises to love us are forever and ever, forever and ever, amen, amen.